Hi everyone and welcome to the next day of microbiology match the following but first the homework of yesterday so row of tombstone appearance is what you had to tell me what I was showing you as an image of Pemphigus vulgaris and a similar tombstone appearance made up of all the ghost cells is also seen in coagulative necrosis. The second question was an immunofluorescence where I showed you the linear or the ribbon candy pattern in bullous pemphigoid in the skin and a similar linear immunofluorescence pattern is seen in RPG and type 1 which all of you correctly told me is the good pasture syndrome and that's not it all of you have given me so much more information about these diseases which is the best part about reading the homework and the comments that i get to gather so much of knowledge from all of you so similarly we are going to go on to match the following which is almost nearing towards the end of this series and also approaching your exams so here we start with the 10 questions the first is a match the following of the image with lots of options in front of you you can see a blood agar and a nutrient agar the blood agar little amount of blood is broken so i can call it a narrow zone of hemolysis and a golden color pigment formed all of which together goes in favor of Staphylococcus aureus. So repeating this once again, I can see a narrow zone of hemolysis and I can see a golden color pigment because in Staph aureus we studied that AU stands for golden, that's the uh, formula of gold. And this pigment because of Staphylo is known as Staphyloxanthine, it is a kind of a beta carotene. Now also the other options, what is the one one most important culture characteristic or one most important question that I get for Enterococcus? which is a gamma hemolysis streptococcus family that is going to be grown on a bile esculin as agar or bile 40 percent and gives a black color the next is hemophilus influenza famous for showing the satellitism requires factor 5 and 10 the next is mycoplasma without a doubt shows the fried egg appearance as all of you know the next is proteus which again without a doubt you know it shows the concentric growth pattern which is the swarming motility the next is vibrio cholera the one that shows rice water stools and i've taught you this question in the image based as well as in the 10 on 10 mcq discussion and the culture media i always tell you is tcbs because that is going to tell us about the sucrose fermentation which you can have a look at these two things over here so this is the mycoplasma fried egg colonies that you're seeing and this is the tcbs BS or Vibrio where you can see the sucrose has been fermented because we are getting a yellow color out here. Moving on to the next organism is Staph aureus where you have seen the golden color pigment already. Next is Pneumococcus also known as Streptococcus pneumoniae. It shows a characteristic carom coin or Drotsman colony again seen in the image and the MCQ discussion. The next is E. coli. We know two organisms which are lactose fermenters. One is E. coli and one is Klebsiella. So, okay, the next is Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas is always famous for its blue-green pigment. So, we can see on a culture media how everything has become blue-green and the name of this pigment is Pyocyanin, which is another important question. For Pseudomonas, if this uh, specific or the selective media has been asked, then it is going to be the Cetrimide agar, which is also a previous year question, very, very important. Moving on to one of the last for spirochetes, especially Treponema pallidum, the one that causes syphilis, which microscopy do we prefer that is the dark field microscope so these are all the answers for the other options let us move forward this is the culture media given next and we have the same list of organisms that i just now taught you so this is the very famous meconchi agar as all of us know and meconchi agar is learned by the mnemonic plant right so what is that pretty pink plant because the final result that we get is going to be something pinkish in color so a pretty pink plant tells me that p of course is for peptone and a is for our agar because every culture media will have peptone and agar L is for lactose because here I'm trying to test for lactose fermentation and of course the answer then becomes E. coli because E. coli and Klebsiella are the two lactose fermenters. Okay, now moving on to what is the indicator, the color is changing so there must be an indicator which is neutral red and what are the bile salts composition present in this? It is torocolate, torocolate are bile salts. Now bile salts are always going to make the medium selective, they will not allow all the other organisms to grow, they will allow only a limited gram negative enterobacteriaceae family to grow over here coming to neutral red is giving me an indication of color change so this is also an indicator medium and lactose fermentation versus no lactose fermentation is being told to me so this is a differential media which means meconchi is a differential plus indicator plus selective media and i'll match it with e coli of course e coli and klebsiella both are lactose fermenter so here i'm getting a pink color moving on to the next one is what you just now told me the same list of organisms and here you have the classic concentric growth pattern or motility what you call it that is the swarming motility of course you would want to match it with proteus but I hope you remember it is not specific swarming motility is shown by a lot of organisms which we need to revise one last time most common of course is important is proteus 
then there's a vibrio that is vibrio parahemolyticus then the next is clostridium tetani and the last is seracea i hope you also remember seracea is a bacteria which is going to produce a red color pigment which is also a pyq moving on to the next this is a list that we revised right in the end yesterday in pathology so which part of this can i apply to microbiology also so the same list we revised and tell me if i see a blackish color organism i'm always thinking of a silver stain and the answer over here is the warden starry silver stain of course this is h pylori but it will never come as a spotter because they will have to give you some kind of a gastric history either they will give you a history of a patient suffering from gastritis or has ended up with a peptic ulcer or has clear had cancers now the two cancers that h pylori can cause number one is adenocarcinoma of the stomach and the other is a lymphoma which is referred to as the maltoma of the stomach both of these are very very important cancers which h pylori causes and these are questions warden starry silver stain giving a black color is the answer moving on to the next one i've got the same list but look at how i've changed the organism over here i can see one oval shaped organism and because the organism has come out to be red the background has come out to be blue this is a classical kinyon stain kinyon stain is the other name for the cold zn stain if you remember cold zn stain kinyon stain basically means it's the same zn stain in which the heating step has been missed so that's why it's cold and this is done for the coccidian parasites and that is your homework for the day i know the three coccidian parasites you guys have mugged up cryptosporidium cyclospora and isospora your homework is that what is this organism is it cryptosporidium cyclospora or isospora whatever organism you are going to tell me i've already told you the shape that it's looking oval you are supposed to tell me the size of this particular oocyst and then you're going to tell me the treatment also that you will give for this organism moving on to the next one is a very interesting genital ulcer so i've got you five scenarios and i've got you the five causes of genital ulcer so let's see if you can mix and match the first one that i have over here scenario number one is a painful genital ulcer and the second scenario is also a painful genital ulcer so get your differential diagnosis in place whenever they talk about painful genital ulcer either it's hemophilus ducri patient crying with pain or it is herpes simplex virus so these two scenarios have to go to these two uh, organisms so let's see if there is a painful genital ulcer and there is a safety pin appearance well two days ago you guys gave me an entire list and the reason for making you revise was today i'll apply that knowledge of safety pin appearance so that is seen with a painful genital ulcer i would want to match it with hemophilus ducri so i will definitely bring this over here the next one is also a painful genital lesion but there are vesicles mentioned now vesicles always are formed with herpes so hsv is the best answer over here and i hope you remember genital herpes is more commonly caused by hsv2 because in virology we study that hsv1 is going to cause lesions above the waist and hsv2 is going to cause lesions below the waist so those are genital lesions so painful i have done now i move on to the painless because the other three scenarios are clear cut painless and let's see how i'm going to fit these other organs so when everything is painless like a painless genital ulcer with a painless inguinal lymph node i will be thinking of syphy less and that is how i'll be matching it so syphy less is everything painless however if the ulcer is painless and the lymph node has come out to be painful and this painful lymph node is referred to as a bubo so if the lymph node is painful i will be thinking of an organism that is lgv lymphogranuloma venereum which is caused by the bacteria chlamydia trachomatis of course it causes trachoma which is a separate situation but chlamydia trachomatis l1 l2 and l3 are the ones that cause lymphogranuloma venereum in which the lymph node is painful but the genital ulcer is painless now the last option that i have where the genital ulcer is again painless and once again safety pin appearance and please note when the genital ulcer was painful with the safety pin appearance you called it hemophilus ducri now the genital ulcer is painless with a safety pin appearance that is known as klebsiella granulomatis which is also known as dono venosis and that's the final match the following that we've done of genital ulcers a very very important table that is ready in front of you moving on to the next one is about interferons a little bit of immunology we have interferon alpha beta gamma you have to match it with their respective sources so we had learned interferon alpha beta gamma as lft which means that alpha is going to come from l that is the leukocytes beta is going to come from the f that is the fibroblast and gamma is going to come from the t lymphocytes so let us revise this once when i say lft interferon alpha beta gamma are going to come from leukocytes fibroblasts and t helper one cells now what function do they do let us revise that also alpha beta and gamma end up doing alpha beta and gamma 
so it is interferon alpha which is going to have antiviral properties in fact interferon beta can also have antiviral properties however the best answer will be interferon alpha because interferon beta can be used elsewhere also for the treatment of a brain disorder that is multiple sclerosis interferon gamma is very important from the granuloma formation point of view so in tb we know it is the t helper one cells in tb that release interferon gamma and that interferon gamma causes granuloma formation so a b g for in and alpha beta gamma other functions moving on to the next match the following a must know for every exam that is going to be motility the first one is the darting darting motility is shown by vibrio and please note that darting motility is so uh, so fast it is known as the shooting star motility and apart from vibrio it is also seen with compylobacter jejuni i hope you remember compylobacter jejuni was the organism that was growing at a temperature of june ka mahina that is 42 degree is what it grows at now moving forward is swarming i think we've discussed it multiple times by the pvc's mnemonic the best answer is proteus now moving on to the tumbling motility tumbling motility motility is shown by listeria it is like falling left and right like a drunk friend that is the tumbling motility shown by listeria now this tumbling motility is also a differential motility which means that this tumbling motility will be present at a temperature of 22 to 25 degrees but it will not be seen at a temperature of 37 degrees and i hope you remember the trick of learning this i told you tumbling is something like a drunk friend falling left and right after binge drinking so you are uh, ideally you should not be drinking at any age but you can still afford to drink in your 20s because then your liver is going to help you metabolize it however at the age of 30s mid 30s and beyond your metabolism takes a dip and of course drinking is something you should not be doing so it is going to tumble at 20s but not in the 30s now going on to the last one is the jerky motility also known as the twitching motility and that is shown by trichomonas vaginalis the one that causes the strawberry cervix a very important question moving on to the next one is also based on motility that what is the organ by which all of these organic organisms are motile first when i look at all of these which is the organism out of this which is non motile is of course plasmodium because that is malaria and malaria does not show motility so one option is ruled out now let's move forward when i say belantidium coli i have always learned this as the only ciliated protozoa so coli will go with cilia that is also done now trypanosoma cruzi i hope you remember the story of the cruz and the jhaka slide which is causing shagas disease that was a flagellated organism so i will match that with flagella and going back to our school days we always used to study that any amoeba will always be showing us pseudopodia like whether we are talking about ant amoeba or we are talking about nigleria which belongs to the family of the free living amoeba all of these are going to be showing us pseudopodia so this matching is also done moving on to the next one which is the last and we haven't revised this since a while so i thought let's revise it with the help of match the following where you are going to get a question on your favorite rickettsia chapter the chapter by the time you reach it in bacteriology you are so drained and uh, exhausted that you end up skipping it so whenever you start your revision of bacteriology i always say start it in the reverse order so that you do the last chapter of rickettsia spirochetes first So this is all the typhus fever group, and you have to match it with their vector. Expecting something like this because something very similar came in the recent I N I exam also. So now we learn it by the famous mnemonic that is let fen tria p s m. I know this mnemonic practically doesn't make any sense, but you don't have an option. So when I say let fen tria and p s m, these are actually four vectors that I'm trying to delineate. So L for louse, and that is going to be for epidemic typhus. So the louse is definitely going to go with epidemic typhus, which I have matched. Matched over here. The next one is going to be fen, so that is going to be for flea, and flea is going to be for endemic typhus. So here we have the flea, and that is going to be for endemic typhus. So make sure out of epidemic and endemic, when you are confused, which is by louse and which is by flea, go through the mnemonic. That let will be epidemic, and fen will be endemic typhus. Now let's go to the T for tick. That is for three particular diseases. The one that you practically, you know, what I feel you have to learn for tick is Rocky Mountain spotted fever, because after after this the other ones are pretty obvious it is indian tick typhus african tick typhus i mean those are obviously going to be because of tick it is rocky mountain spotted fever that you have to learn so rocky mountain spotted fever was given over here in the question and i will be matching that with the hard tick moving on to the last one that is 
might and we have learnt it by PSM. So this is going to be for P for pox, rickettsial pox and S is going to be for scrub typhus, the one that is caused by Orientia susugamushi. So over here the mite is written that is the trombiculid mite is written and for the trombiculid mite you will be matching it with scrub typhus which is Orientia susugamushi. So let, fen, tria, PSM, a very very important table both in PSM subject also and it is important in microbiology. Well with that we wrap up today's match the following it was rather quick but we finished 10 and the homework I hope you remember was that coccidian parasite image with the one which was oval in shape you had to tell me the name of that organism the size of the oocyst and the treatment that you're going to give now the next two days where we wrap up this series is going to be uh, totally your kind of days where we are going to discuss 10 to 12 quick previous year questions the first exam that is coming up is the FMGE exam so both these days I will be putting up FMG questions which means it will be important for FMG students and for NEET PG students usually your focus is entirely on NEET PG PYQs and you don't get too much of time to revise FMG PYQs so I think this way you will be able to revise those as well and it's going to be a good exercise for you also so I'll meet you for the next two days with PYQs keep studying and I'm waiting for the homework answers